Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the January 2023 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P3 paper. This question here is about the modulus function in the chapter of graphs and functions, and it tells us that figure two shows a sketch of the graph with the equation y equals the modulus of 3x minus 5a, close modulus, take away 2a outside there, um, where a is a positive constant. So a is a positive constant. The graph that tells us it cuts the y-axis at the point P and the x-axis at the points Q and R and it has a minimum point at S. So first it says find in simplest form in terms of A the coordinates of the point P. Okay, so the point P in terms of A. Okay, so let's do that first. So P at P we can say it's where it hits the y-axis. So at P, x equals zero. So when x equals 0, y equals the modulus of 3 times 0 minus 5a minus 2a. Okay, so you end up with y equals the modulus of um, minus 5a minus 2a. Now the modulus of minus 5a where a is a positive constant is going to be 5a. So this is going to be 5a minus 2a which gives you 3a. So P has the coordinates 0 and 3A. Okay, so that's the point P. That's 3A over there. That's part 1. Then it says part 2, the points Q and R. So we've got to find the coordinates of the points Q and R. Um, so we know at, at Q and R, we know that X, that Y equals 0, sorry. It's on the X axis. On the X axis... You can say on the x-axis, y is equal to 0. So we take our equation, which is the modulus of 3x minus 5a minus 2a, and we equate it to 0. Okay. Now, we could do this in a couple of ways. We could do this like um, visually, or we can do this algebraically. I think algebraically is fine here. We can see that there's two solutions which are both correct. So I can just isolate the modulus sign. And then I can think of this as if the modulus of 3x minus 5a is equal to 2a, then either 3x minus 5a is equal to 2a or 3x minus 5a is equal to negative 2a. Those are the two possibilities in terms of, that's what the definition of a modulus is. The modulus of x is equal to something, then either x is that thing or the negative of that thing, all right? So now we can solve for a, uh, for x, sorry. So we have 3x equals 2a plus 5a, which is 7a. So x is equal to 7a over 3. And in this case, we're going to have um, 3x is equal to minus 2a plus 5a, which is 3a, so x is equal to a. So the coordinates of the points p and q, now 7a a over 3 is more, so we can say that q is, the coordinates of q, q is a and 0, and the coordinates of q r, coordinates of r are, 7a over 3 and 0. So that's the answer to part 2. Now for part 3, I'm going to answer part 3 up here, although should really do it on the other page, but part 3 is asking us to find the point S, the coordinates of the point S in terms of A. So for part 3, we're looking at the coordinates of the vertex. And the simplest, easiest way of finding the coordinates of the vertex is simply by looking at this, okay, looking at the equation. Whatever's inside the modulus sign, okay, is always going to be, in the end, after you've applied the modulus sign to it, positive. So this whole thing will always be positive. This will always be positive, what's inside here. I mean, what's when you've put it inside the modulus. All right, so the lowest this can ever go is zero. It can't be less than zero. Okay, this can't be less than zero. 
So we can see that this the y coordinate of s must be 2a. Okay, that's the lowest it can go because the lowest it can be this can be zero. Therefore, you have y. The lowest it can be zero minus 2a, which is minus which is minus 2a. Sorry, not 2a, minus 2a. Okay, that's minus 2a. The lowest it can go. All right, that's minus 2a. And what makes this go as low as low as minus 2a? That's when x is the value that makes this modular sign zero. So when 3x minus 5a equals zero, you have the modulus of zero minus 2a, which is minus 2a. So the x value that makes this what's inside here zero is the x value, which is the x coordinate of the vertex. So you have 3x equals 5a x equals 5 over 3a. So 5a over 3, 5a over 3, and negative 2a. Those are the coordinates of the, the vertex. Okay? Now, this is very similar to, is if, supposing we had 3x minus 5a all squared minus 2a. Okay? This would be a quadratic. It wouldn't look like this. It would be a quadratic. But this has a very similar kind of idea of the vertex. We would say the vertex is the opposite of this, Okay, um, but it will be the opposite of, basically it wouldn't be the opposite of the exact, it will be whatever makes this bracket zero. Okay, so it's going to be minus, it's going to be plus 5 over 3a. And the y coordinate of the vertex is minus 2a. All right, so it's whatever makes this bracket zero is the x coordinate of the vertex. For whether it's a quadratic or if it's a modulus function, the same idea is there because this is also something that never becomes negative squared you square something it's it stays positive even if it, it's is negative it becomes positive so the lowest this can ever be is zero can't be negative this whole thing when you take the square as well so the lowest can be zero what makes what makes this zero when you know you got to find the value of x that makes this zero which is in this case five over three a all right so it's the same principle applied when we're finding the the vertex of a quadratic or the vertex of a modulus function, we can read it straight away. That's the easiest way of finding that. We could have done it by also taking these two, the x coordinates, a and 7a over 3. So we know this is a, and this is 7a over 3, because we already found them, and we could find what's exactly halfway between them. So we could say a plus 7a um, over 3, sorry, over 3, and divided by 2. So that will be like um, 10a over 3 divided by 2, which gives you 5a over 3. And then you can put that back into this function to find what y is, but that's more complicated. That would also give us the same answer, but reading it from the equation is far easier. So it's the x value that makes this 0 uh, for the x coordinate and what's left behind there for the, for the y coordinate. So there's the answer to part 3. So I've written up there, but I'll just write it down here as well. 5 over 3a. Okay, so this is 5 over 3. What's happened to my pen? So you have 5a over 3 and negative 2a. That's the coordinates of the point S. Okay, so that's the answer to 6 part A, um, parts 1, 2, and 3. Now for part B. It says, find in simplest form, in terms of A, the values of X for which the modulus of 3X minus 5A minus 2A, which is what's drawn, is equal to the modulus of X minus 2A. Okay, so we could do this um, algebraically, although when you have two modules, it makes life a lot more difficult. It's way easier when you're dealing with a modulus equation especially this type of modulus equation, for you to basically um, use a graphical method, right? We know that um, this is already drawn. I know this is A. I know this was 7A over 3. I know this is uh, 3A. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, we know those values. And also we know that this is, um, you know, 5A over 3 and minus 2a. Okay, so we know those values. Now, if I'm going to draw y equals the modulus of x minus 2a, where a, as we know, is a positive constant. Okay, first of all, think about drawing y equals x 
minus 2a. That would be a graph which has a gradient which is less steep than this, and it would go through 2a in the negative side, and it would cross the x-axis when y is 0, so when y equals 0, you got x minus 2a equals 0, so x equals 2a. So it's going to cross somewhere over here, and somewhere down there, it's going to be a line which is shallower than those lines, okay, not as steep as the, 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 the other two lines, or the other line, and it's going to cross somewhere between those two. So that's a sketch of the graph y equals x minus 2a. Okay, now that's x minus 2a. However, this is a modulus. This is the modulus. So it doesn't reach here. It doesn't, it basically, it's in front of the whole function, so it, it kind of bounces off at this point on the x-axis, and it goes up, and instead of crossing at minus 2, it's going to cross at 2. Okay, so it's going to be something like this. It won't go as far as that, but it will continue on this side, like that. Okay, so it's going to be put that a bit higher to make it look a bit more realistic. Okay, so I've just drawn it a bit, sh I've drawn it shallower than this, that's all, just so it looks a bit more realistic. So that's 2a, okay, and that point here is minus um, 2a, okay, when y is 0, x is 2a, uh, yep, so that's minus 2a, that's 2a, and this is the curve y equals the modulus of x minus 2a. All right, so now, we know that this, uh, this equation is solved when we find these two points of intersection. Okay, now we've got to make sure that we find the correct places of intersection. So, I know that this part of this graph is y equals x minus 2a. And I know that this part of the graph is y equals 2a minus x, when you put a minus in front of the outside. That's the negative argument. And for this graph, okay, you have y equals, this is going to be the positive argument, whereas if you take this bracket as a bracket without, you know, just a positive. So it's going to be 3x minus 5a minus 2a, that will be 3x minus 7a. But the negative argument is going to be as if you take this as a minus in front of this modulus, like a minus in front of the bracket, like you take a bracket with a negative. So you're going to have negative y equals negative 3x, and there will be plus 5a, because the minus and minus is plus, and minus, so it's 5a minus 2a, which is plus 3a. As we can see, it goes through 3a. So we can see that the points of intersection of these graphs are here and here. Okay, so those points of intersection, if we can work out which arguments are intersecting, it will give us the correct answers. We won't get any false solutions in. Otherwise, we end up getting false solutions. Like there's a solution where this line meets this line. That's a false solution because this line doesn't go to that line. There's another false solution over here. We want to cut out the false solutions by looking to see where they intersect. So we have y equals 3x minus 7a equals x minus 2a. That's one point where they intersect. The other point is here where the two negative arguments meet. Okay, so where 2a minus x is equal to minus 3x plus 3a. That's where these two meet. And those are the only places where they intersect. We don't have to look at any other places. Okay, if we did it purely algebraically, we will get some solutions which don't actually really exist. And this way we cut them out because we can see where the solutions are. And when you've got something in this form, that's by far the easiest way to deal with it. So now we can subtract x from both sides for this one. So we have 3x minus x, and we can add 7a to both sides to solve this equation. So we have 2x is equal to 5a. So x is equal to 5 over 2a, which kind of makes sense. It's on the positive side. And for this one, it's also on the positive side, but it's going to be less than a. As you can see, this cube coordinate is a, so it'll be less than a. Hopefully that works out. So we're going to have... Um, I'll have minus x plus 3x equals 3a minus 2a. So this gives us 2x equals a. So x equals a half a. Okay, a over 2. And so it's asking us to find the x values. Okay, so that's we don't have to find the y values. So we have when x is equal to 5 over 2a and when x is equal to a half a. 
those are the two x values where they intersect. It did not tell us to find the y coordinates, so we don't need to do that, right? If they did, we would have to put the y, we would, I mean, probably put it into this equation. We'll put those x values into this equation um, for, for this one here and for that one there, and we would find the y values of intersection. So there we have the answer to this question, question number six, part B. I think that's as far as six goes, that's right. So that's a classic example of solving modulus function equations. Some people do things like squaring both sides and all sorts of different things and or use purely algebraic approaches. I like to use this visual approach. This is a topic where, you know, it's very good for you, especially the whole of this chapter of chapter three in P3, to visualize what you're doing really makes everything make a lot more sense and you can see what you're doing, you can understand what you're doing. I highly recommend that you stick to trying to do things using visual approaches. I find that will work like, make your life a lot easier for you. Okay, so there's the answer to question number six. Other questions from this particular um, paper can be found in the playlist that will appear at the end of the video somewhere over here. Other questions from um, the topic of modulus functions can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And over here, you'll find a link taking you to a video which shows you how to use my channel effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.